All right. Good day, everybody. It's Wednesday, March 9th, 2022. Uh, welcome to Headline Hits with LW. Let's just dive right into a lot to talk about today. Uh, some very concerning stuff. I'll try to keep you updated on this. Uh, it's been in the news cycle for the last 24 hours. So let's uh, let's dive into it real quick and talk about private school. Man, this is very concerning. Listen to this. Private school teachers nationwide implementing race uh, essentialist, essentialist, uh, curriculum trained by the black Panthers through teachers, uh, through teacher training lectures with titles like cultivating anti-racist and activist in kindergarten, <laughs> uh, decolonizing the minds of second graders and the white people way the nation's leading accreditation association for private schools is instructing educators to adopt a race essentialist and culture Marxist curriculum for children as young as age five. I'm not making any of this stuff up. Uh, it's frustrating. Um, you know, as a parent, uh, having a kid in school, we've talked about it many times. I've talked about pulling Noah out of school, uh, and homeschooling him. I think, I think we're going to get to a place where a huge majority of Americans are going to pull their kids out of school because this is all nonsense. This type of, uh, educators, um, transgenderism, you name it. They are attacking our children, folks. The war is shifted from us to our children. Wake up. All right, here's the next headline. Pence. Um, I know he's been dead, I don't know, 24 times. He's got, I think, 142 clones. I don't know. But uh, he has gone on record stating this. At the right time, my family and I will reflect and consider a 2020, our 2024 ambitions. What's he talking about? Well, Tuesday, former Vice President Mike Pence said when uh, when the time is right, in quote, he and his family will consider his future political ambitions, including a possible 2024 presidential run. In the meantime, Pence said that he will be focused on the 2022 midterm elections. You know, all of my focus right now is in 2022, in quote, he said, I think we have a historic opportunity to reclaim the majorities in the House and the Senate and to elect great Republican governors around America. And in 2023, I, I'm confident that the Republican Party will nominate a candidate who will be the next president of the United States of America. And at that time, my family and I will reflect and consider how we might participate in that process. But now... More than ever, with the war in Europe and the other, uh, and with the uh, the administration seemingly intent on weakening our country and dividing our nation toward uh, driving our nation toward a European style welfare state, we need strong Republican majorities in our Capitol Hill and strong Republican governors across this country. And quote from Mike Pence. Is he going to run for president? I don't know. Just thought I'd throw that out there. Um, let's go to the next headline here because here's somebody else whose name has been thrown in the hat to run for president, and she's saying no. Hillary Clinton dismisses poss uh, possibility of future presidential run. Tuesday on MSNBC's Morning Joe, former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton downplayed the possibilities of another presidential run when asked by co-host Mika uh, Brzezinski. Clinton came up short in her two bids in 2008 and 2016. However, some have speculated about Clinton as a Democratic candidate in 2024 should incumbent President Joe Biden decide not to seek second term. Um, well, heck, it took Joe three times to get there, Hillary. So maybe, maybe third time's a charm for you too, especially if we're still using, you know, those machines on election day, you might have a real shot at it this time. All right, let's hit the next headline and let's talk about our current, um, well, he's not my president, 
but the current person who's occupying the White House that I guess has um, the most popular president of all time, the most votes of all time. So let's talk about him real quick. Joe Biden shrugs, uh, shrugs off high gas prices. Can't do much about it right now. I can't make this up. President Joe Biden shrugged, uh, shrugged at high gas prices on Tuesday, just hours after promising Americans that he would do whatever it took to lower them. Quote, can't do much right now, end quote, he told reporters when he uh, when he was asked about the spiking high gas prices. And he, quote, Russia is responsible, end quote. That was his answer. Couldn't be that from day one when you took office that you canceled the Keystone Pipeline, you put all those uh, environmental restrictions on fracking, you you pulled permits from fracking, you went after all the uh, oil companies here in America, war on oil here in America. It couldn't be that, Joe. Has to be Putin's fault. Has to be Russia's fault. Biden spoke about uh, gas prices after exiting Air Force One in Texas for an event on veterans health care. When reporters asked Biden what his message to Americans suffering from the high from the effects of high, half ga gas prices, his reply was, well, they're going to go up. The president uh, appeared nonchalant about the gas prices just hours after promising to work to bring them down. I'm going to do everything I can to minimize Putin's price hike here at home, end quote, said Biden during a speech Tuesday morning at the White House. Even old Circle Back, uh, she's got a new, new title now, so every time she's asked a question, she'll respond in this manner. I'm not going to give you a nod or a wink or any specifics. I've heard her say this many, 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 many times now, because she's getting away from the circle back comment. So now she's taking a different approach. And she said, adding to that, there are a range of options on the table. That's what she always says now. So now her response to any question that she doesn't want to answer is, well, I can't give you the specifics. And there's a range of options on the table. That is coming from the current administration on high gas prices. So let's hit the next headline here, which is why Putin may cut off Europe's gas. Um, the baseball manager uh, Yogi Berra uh, complained that a nickel ain't worth a dime anymore on Monday. However, a nickel was suddenly worth seven seven dimes. Let's talk about that. Precious metals. Um, there's some issues with with nickel right now. Um, nickel is used for for a lot of things. The metal for which five cent piece is named uh, named soar, uh, soared in trading with three month forward contracts jumping from twenty thousand to a hundred thousand. Things got so wild that the London Metals Exchange suspended trading altogether and said it may not reopen until next week. They shut trading down because trading for nickel went absolutely berserk yesterday. Uh, the root cause of this week's nickel freakout was Russia's invasion of the Ukraine. Russia is a major supplier of nickel, which is in a short supply due to the rising demand for use in lithium batteries. Hmm. What else do we use lithium batteries for? Could it be electric cars? I don't know. So what's that going to do to the price of the electric cars? Traders are worried that Russian supply might be removed from the market. Uh, a lot of a lot of sanctions on Russia right now. So what is Russia going to do? They're going to fight back. They're not going to just lay down. Keep an eye on uh, nickel, folks. Keep an eye on platinum. Keep an eye on gold and silver. Uh, gold has now jumped up to record highs of over 2,000. Um, silver, I haven't checked. Well, let me check right now. Silver was at $25 an ounce yesterday, and we've been talking about this. Buy your silver as quick as you can. Now silver is $26 an ounce. Gold is $2,003 an ounce, down $48 from yesterday. So precious metals is rising. Um, protect yourself. That's all I can say. If you guys are interested in more information, you can go to info at milesfranklin.com. I'm thinking I'm going to reach out to Andy and see if he can come on and talk to us about the economy. 
Um, I've been paying attention to the Economic Ninja on YouTube. You guys check him out. He's putting out a lot of great information. Um, a lot of stuff going on, and we really gotta we really gotta just take care of ourselves here and be self sufficient. All right, next headline: uh, Trump on the Nord Stream two. I shut it down, then Biden opened it up. Uh, former, well, he's not former. He is my president, Donald Trump is bash bashing his democratic uh predecessor president joe biden i don't even want to call him president for enabling russian president vladimir putin by opening uh up the north a north stream 2 pipeline for russia uh for russia to pump natural gas to western europe let's drop down and see exactly what he said in this interview there was nobody tougher on russia than i was i mean he says that a lot uh, Trump said in an interview with McDa uh, with McDaniel, and I would say that Putin would, if he was being honest, would say that uh, the sanctions I put on was one of uh, was one that ended the Nord Stream. There was never anybody even close. I mean, Nord Stream two was the biggest thing. Nobody ever even heard of it until I came along and complained. And he was looking out for America, folks. Uh, he always put America first. And when I shut it down. There was never anything so big that happened to Russia than shutting down the Nord Stream 2. Uh, two. Then Biden came along and, and reopened it immediately. I can't even believe it. And now we are where we're at. It's a disgrace. The, th the other thing we are is we're just a little while ago energy independent. And I'm going to stop there. There's a lot more he goes into. Um <laughs> You know, crude was down to forty dollars a barrel. Now it's up to about one hundred and thirty. Um, this administration is a total dumpster fire and debacle. So Trump was just in the interview pointing out the things that he did as president, which put America first, and we want him back. We want him back immediately. So if you're listening to us, Trump, please come back. We need you. We're tired of this crap. All right, let's uh, let's dive into some more serious content here, and let's talk about uh, nuclear. Nuclear watchdog says it lost contact with Russian-controlled uh, Sarajevo. Russian-occupied forces have disconnected Sar uh, Sarajevo nuclear power plant in northern Ukraine from the national power grid, igniting safety fears at the site. The global nuclear watchdog warned on Wednesday, which is today, the international... Atomic Energy Agency, which is abbreviated IAEA, said Ukraine had notified it about a loss of control over the site, which had been taken by the Russian troops. Now, where does this fit into everything? Well, the point is, when it comes to the nuclear, there are certain protocols that you have to take to ensure the safety. Uh, cooling is one of them. I, I don't think Russia is meaning for anything um, horrific to happen with that nuclear plant. I don't believe that for one minute. Uh, what it does do is it cuts off power to northern Ukraine. Why are they cutting off power? Uh, what are they planning on doing? It's just something that I think uh, we really need to pay attention to. Uh, National Nuclear Energy Company uh, also said that the plant is in total blackout with no power supply. So they shut it down. They shut it down. So I'm going to be paying attention to this very closely. Just so you guys know, I had a conversation with Jeff B. a little while ago, and we are planning on doing a show. So you guys keep keep uh, keep in tune with this because I don't know when it's going to be. Um, I'll let you guys know, but we did have a conversation together, and I think we're going to do a show. It's either going to be on Podbean or it's going to be here on YouTube, and I don't know what day or what hour, uh, but stay tuned because I'm going to let you guys know. You're going to want to hear what Jeff B. has to say. Let's hit the next headline here and talk about a nuclear scare, okay? This is coming right out of um, the U.S. intelligence um, officials say Putin's nuclear threat should be taken seriously. Why is that? Uh, the intelligence committee leader said Tuesday during a White House intelligence committee hearing that Ru uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin's um, nuclear threat should be taken seriously. Now, do I think... And I'm no expert on any of this stuff, but do I think that uh, Putin would do anything like this? I don't personally think that anybody would be that stupid. And I think Putin uh, is a very smart man. I don't think he would ever 
um, start a nuclear war. I don't think that for a minute. But our government uh, seems to think that it's a legit threat. Um, is it a false flag? Is it pushing a certain narrative into World War III? I don't know. Um, but I find it uh, interesting, concerning, whatever you want to call it. Ranking member Mike Turner, a Republican from Ohio, asked top uh, intelligence officers testifying whether R Russian President Putin would be willing to use nuclear weapons if the U.S. or NATO intervene in the Ukraine war to protect innocent civilians. He went on record to say, in response to your direct question about uh, the Syrian, uh, about in which the NATO and the United States were directly involved in a mil military conflict conflict with Russia, you know, Russian doctrine holds that you escalate to do to de-escalate. So I think the risk would be would rise according to the doctrine it of in extremists, you know, the Russian leadership considering the use of tactical nuclear weapons, but I stress that it's only in the specific circumstances that you describe uh, a direct military conflict between NATO and Russia. So what am I reading there? What I, what I think I'm reading there is, I guess, if NATO was to cross, cross, cross borders into Russia, if, if the U.S. was to cross borders into Russia then I guess Vladimir Putin would take any measure necessary to end that threat. That's how I take it. Um, the uh, Defense Intelligence Agency Army Lieutenant General Scott Bar Bar Barrier w w warned that Putin should be taken at his word. He says, and quote, I also believe that when he says something, we should listen very, very carefully and maybe take him at his word, end quote. He also added, this question is one that analysis are pondering right now, and I think we really need to do something more uh, work on it. So, <clears throat> end quote. Um, you know, I grew up in the 80s. I'm an 80s kid, and when there was always threat of nuclear war, has been for 30-something years for me. Um, 30 plus years. We all know the movie Red Dawn with Charlie Sheen. And uh, who was the other one? Uh, Emilio, was it Emilio Estevez? No, it was Charlie Sheen. And uh, man, I can't remember the other person. Anyway, that was a very popular movie in the 80s when I was a kid. They did a remake of it. I, I like the original better, but uh, that was a movie with Cuba what was it Cuba and Russia invading America after a nuclear war? Um, is that a telltale sign for anything? I don't know. All right, let's talk about uh, MiG-29s real quick for the Ukraine, and then I'm going to get out of here. So the Pen Pentagon shoots down a Polish plan to transfer MiG-29s to the Ukraine. Why? Uh, the Pentagon on Tuesday evening shot down a Polish proposal to transfer their MiG-29 fighter aircraft to Ukraine and receive replacement aircraft from the United States. Who's going to fly the planes? Um, if the Ukraine does not have pilots, um, and I don't, I, I think they do, but I mean, what are they trying to do here? And then they're expecting America to replace those MiG 29s with what? With our F 16s, with our, um, with some of our fighter jets. Uh, fighter, uh, fighter uh, aircraft. This stuff is so disturbing. I don't think anybody knows what the hell they're doing or what the hell's going on, to be honest with you. It's just a total debacle. Um, Germany's getting involved. Germany to hand over to the Ukraine. Um, they're supplying the base for the MiG-29s. Um, Zelensky has appealed to NATO members to send aircraft and more weapons as Russia forces continue to encircle a majority of Ukrainian cities, including the capital of, Ke of Kevar, uh, Ke Kiev. Um, this ain't over yet, folks. I'm telling you right now, this is not over. It's just starting. Where this goes, I have no idea. That's why I want to get Jeff's opinion on things. 
So like I said, stay tuned. We'll have Jeff on here real soon and see uh, what it is that uh, he thinks is going on. So that's all we have for today. Don't forget, I'll be on later this afternoon at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Podbean. And today, I believe I got John E. and Mountain Man on, and we're going to talk about 11.3. So if you guys want to know more about 11.3, check us out over on Podbean at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then I'll be back on this evening at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here, Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube. Love you all. Have a great day.